I'm very fortunate in that I, I've had quite a, uh, a range of experiences in the, the field of working with children and parents um, uh, over the years. And um, I, as a student, I was I interned at a school uh, at Clark School for the Deaf, which was an oral school. Then I was audiologist at Austin School for the Deaf, and that was a manual program where we signed. It was a total communication program. And um, I also saw people from the community and um, I would visit classrooms in the morning. So I saw all the kids in the residential setting. And then later on, I, as um, Lisa pointed out, I, I became a school psychologist. I got involved in a, a program for children with emotional challenges. And then from there, I went into consulting and went out and visited children all over the Southeast Vermont in different public school settings in preschool. And I was a parent infant um, educator for a while. So I would go into homes and work with parents with babies and toddlers. So I've kind of run the gamut here. And um, finally, uh, I was a consultant and I would go to elementary schools and visit them weekly. And I was able to run groups where children who were mainstreamed were in with all their friends. And we played games and we talked and we shared experiences and tried to educate each other about the challenges of good communication. So that's what um, brought me to write this book. Uh, I wanted to appeal to children and uh, talk about how difficult communication can be at times, especially when you have a hearing loss. And um, at times people that are, are at a loss as to how to handle that. It can be the elephant in the room, so to speak. And uh, it's always best to get things out in the open and to educate each other and to share ways that will maximize or help communication. And we sign if it's necessary or we want to, or we need to, everyone should learn how to sign. But in, in many cases, the people we communicate with don't sign. So uh, every situation is unique. Every child is unique. So um, that's what uh, we want to get at today. And after the story, I would love to hear from folks about um, um, your families and your children and situations you might come up against. Uh, issues you might want to discuss and share, and maybe I um, can uh, help with some suggestions. Um, so we'll see. Um, I am pleased to be able to, um, I'm going to use the audio portion of the iBook that I developed for The Elephant in the Room. Rather than read it with my own dull voice, uh, I'm going to use the audio track for each page. And then what I'll do is I'll discuss the page just as I would if I were reading to a child or uh, a group of children, uh, just the way that I would do it. Uh, what I wanna do now is I wanna just test level. So if someone can um, tell me if this level sounds about right. The elephant in the room by Jim Bombasino, illustrated by Gilles Das Chatal. All right, let's try this. The Elephant in the Room, written by Jim Bombasino, illustrated by good? Gilles Das Chatal. Okay. Now, the other thing I would mention about this, the, this audio track is that it, um, simulates, uh, it, it treats some of the voices such as um, we might, if we were trying to simulate the hearing loss that uh, Skylar has as a way of demonstrating that it's a little bit more difficult for him to hear. Okay. The light flashing alarm clock came to life waking Skylar and his dog with a start. 
Okay, okay. I'm up, I'm up. So here we have Skyler. How do you suppose he woke up this morning? He may have heard the alarm, but another way we see is that there's a reading lamp plugged into the back of his alarm clock. And when the buzzer goes, the light flashes and it shines right in his face to help him wake up. It's a tool that he uses. Now let's suppose he didn't hear the alarm or the light didn't go off. What's another way that he might've gotten woken up? The dog barked and jumped up on his bed. That'll wake anybody up. Tyler thought he heard a sound far off in the distance. I bet that's mom calling. Ugh, I don't feel much like talking today. Skyler snatched his hearing aids from the nightstand and started to get dressed. As he did, he saw his little sister Maisie appear at the door holding her little toy elephant, who was thinking, he's gonna need those. So, here we have Skylar saying, oh, I don't feel much like talking today. Why do you suppose he feels that way? Well, his mom is calling and he's not even sure what she said. And that's not a very good way to start the day. A little elephant is thinking, he's gonna need those. Those what? Those hearing aids will help him hear today. Why don't you feel like talking? Because it's too hard to listen, even with my hearing aids. Oh. So Skylar's saying it's too hard to listen, even with my hearing aids. Well, this book is going to tell us some of the ways that make it hard for him to listen. Let's watch and see. Skyler was hungry. He went straight to the cupboard. His big brother, Joe, was already at the table watching Wake Up America. Without looking up, he said, Yo, Skyler, what's up with you? For Skyler, what was up was his cuckoo crunches. All he could hear was the TV. Maisie's little elephant was thinking, The TV volume is what's up, dude. Huh. Well, so Skyler went straight to the cupboard. Joe was watching the TV. The TV volume is what's up, dude. You suppose Hyler, Skyler heard him say, what's up, dude? I don't think so. There's a lot going on there. Skyler turned from the cupboard. Joe was already on his way out the door. Have a good one, squirt. Skyler missed it. He could only guess. You like my shirt? Little elephant was thinking, shirt, squirt, what are they talking about? Skyler missed it. Joe was already on his way out the door. Why do you suppose Skyler missed it? Well, we can see that Joe's looking right out the door. Skyler can't see his face. And the TV volume is still up. Those are all things that make it difficult to hear. But Joe isn't thinking about it right now. And that's part of the problem.
Skyler switched off the TV and was just about to pour cereal into his bowl when in came Sally from behind. Good morning. Yeah. Crunchies were everywhere. It's too early in the morning for this. Well, so here, Skyler jumped. Why do you suppose he jumped? Well, Sally saying good morning. I don't think he was expecting it. Maybe she surprised him. He might not have heard her come in the room. So when she sang, he jumped and the crunchies flew everywhere. The little elephant is thinking, it's too early in the morning for this. Skylar's probably thinking that too. Don't sneak up on me. I wasn't sneaking. I was just being cheerful. Well, I'm not, and I don't feel like talking. Well, do you feel like picking up cereal? Because it's all over the floor. <laughs> Grr. Grr. We're tigers. Jungle animals get mean when they're hungry. So, Skylar doesn't feel like talking. Hmm. I'm not surprised. How is Sally being to Skylar right now? She says she's cheerful, but I don't know if she's very helpful. She's kind of teasing him about picking up the cereal. I might say grr if I were Skylar. If I might, uh, and that little elephant is saying, oh, jungle animals get mean when they're hungry. Skylar's probably hungry now that his cereal's all over the floor. What could Sally have done differently? Skylar finally collected his bowl full of cereal and sat down to eat. In came dad. Hey, there he is. Good morning, son. Morning, dad. This is a good start. Why do you suppose it's a good start? That's interesting. Well, what's good about this situation? Dad is looking at Skylar. Skylar's looking at Dad. Dad is talking slowly and clearly. Skylar says, morning, Dad. It's a good start. Dad turned away to fix his morning coffee. So, Sky, am I just thinking in your socks at this point? What? Dad turned around to face him. I'm really looking forward to watching you practice. Skylar was confused. My socks fit okay. I don't smell anything. <laughs> That's kind of a silly situation. You think Dad really said I, that he's stinky and his socks are too tight? I don't think so. Skylar was confused, though. What is dad doing now that's not a good start? He turned away to fix his morning coffee. Hmm, that's probably making it difficult for Skylar, isn't it? Socks? No, I said I'm cooking you up at soccer tonight. Skyler was relieved. Enough about socks and dad being stinky. Oh, well, yeah, that would be good. I guess I didn't hear you right. That's all right, Sky. Don't you worry about it. I'll see you later on the field. But we do worry about it. So dad says, that's all right, Sky. Don't you worry about it. See you later on the field. Dad wants Skyler to feel good about the situation. The little elephant is thinking what Skylar might be thinking. We do worry about it. We worry about what we don't hear. 
what we might be missing. It's important to us. And many, many times people forget that, even though they mean well. Skyler finished his cereal and brought his bowl to the sink. Just as he did, in came his mom. She gave him a hug. Good morning, Skyler. I see you are up. Are you all right? You didn't answer me when I called up to you before. Oh, I'm fine. It's just that I was upstairs, and I don't feel much like talking today. Skyler didn't feel much like explaining either. I couldn't hear you either, even with my big elephant ears. So Skyler didn't feel much like explaining. His mom is not aware that she was calling from him from downstairs and he couldn't really hear that far away. And he doesn't feel much like talking or explaining. And that's just how he feels. Maybe he's tired of explaining. Sometimes we get tired of explaining what we didn't hear or what we need to see happen. And that's not a good situation. Of course, mom wanted to cheer him up. Oh, sure you do. Sally would love to talk to you. She's pretty excited about something today. Sure enough, Sally was just about to burst into the room. Get ready, get set. Well, mom says, oh, sure you do feel like talking. Sally would love to talk to you. Mom wanted to cheer him up. Moms want to do that. They want to make us feel better. But she, is she really recognizing how Skylar's feeling? Not really. She just wants him to talk to Sally to feel better. But I think Skylar's looking for someone to say, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Here comes Sally. She's a cheerful, exciting person. Hey, Skylar, guess what? No. This is my new for my Let me see. Can I see? Can I see? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Whoa, stop. You're both talking at once. I know. Let's take turns. I have my trunk up. Pick me. Oh, that little elephant. He gets in there, doesn't he? Whoa, stop. Why does he say, whoa, stop? Well, I think we, we can see it. We can hear it. Sally and Maisie are both talking at once. It's hard to hear when more than one person talks at a time. So what can we do about it? Listen to the elephant. Let's take turns. One person speak at a time. The elephant can't really put his hand up. He's got to put his trunk up. Sally, in a hurry as usual, headed for the door. And I'm going to be doing a science fair project on going with the produce at the farmer's market. Huh? Skylar's head was spinning. He thought he just heard the longest word in the world, but what was it? Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. But we do mind, and it does matter. So slow down. So why was Skylar's head spinning? Was it the longest word in the world? It actually was a sentence. She was talking about her science fair project, but she was speaking so fast it sounded like one long word. So the elephant, once again, is a smart guy. He says it does matter, so slow down. And she has that phrase in there. Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. I don't feel like telling you what I just said. And that's not a very nice way to behave. It's not a patient way. And it's kind of overlooking the way Skylar feels. He wanted to know what she said.
Maisie had an idea. She walked over to Skylar and tapped his leg to get his attention. Using her very best speech and looking him straight in the eyes, she said, Sally's doing a science fair project. It's about Farmer Jane and her garden. Before you go to school, will you play tea party and talk with us? And for the first time that morning, Skylar smiled. Now we're on the same page. <laughs> so for the first time, Skylar smiled. Why is he smiling? Well, Maisie was using all the best practices for communication. She, let's see, what did she do? She tapped his leg to get his attention so he could look at her. She used her best speech. She looked him right in the eyes and she told him what she wanted to do and she waited for his response. That was really nice of her. Oh, the elephant is saying, now we're on the same page. Get it? That's an idiom and it's also true. They're on the same page, but they're also understanding each other. And that's what we're on the same page, the idiom means. We're on the same page, we get it. We understand each other. Mom and dad watched from the doorway as Skylar and Macy had tea. Look, honey, Skylar's happy to chat when he can understand more easily. Let's try to remember that we should get close, speak clearly, and be face to face when we talk to him. Listening is hard work for all of us, especially when you have a hearing loss. Huh? So, who's your special friend? I'm the elephant in the room. Duh. Got any peanuts to go with this? So, even dads say, huh, once in a while. Maybe the dad didn't hear the mom quite right. But mom is telling us what we really want to think about in this book, that there are some very simple communication rules to keep in mind if we all want to understand each other. And let's see if we can go through those now, those three rules. Actually, there's more than three. Let's think about what we saw in the book. And um, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll go on a, we'll convert to a gallery view and we'll try and recap. I will recap the several different rules that we highlighted in the story. <clears throat> 